July 25th, San Carlos Planning Commission's uh, special meeting to order. If you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Harper Pedersen is absent this evening, and I don't see Commissioner um, Don Bradley here this evening as well. So, Commissioner Gutierrez? Present. Vice Chair Silverman? Present. And Chair Berkman? Present. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the public comment. Public comment is limited to items not on the agenda. The Commission may briefly respond to statements made or questions posed as, followed, as allowed by the Brown Act. <clears throat> However, the Commission's general policy is to refer items to staff for attention or have a matter placed on a future Commission agenda for more comprehensive action or report. Is there anyone here wanting to speak on an item that's not on today's agenda? Okay, seeing none, I'll move on to the public hearing. The procedure for the public hearing is that the staff will present a report on the history, physical features, etc., on the application followed with the staff's recommendation. The applic applicant will make a presentation. Thereafter, interested members of the community may speak on the proposal. When all interested parties have had an opportunity to be heard, the hearing will be closed and no further discussion from the floor can be held. The commission will then consider the evidence and make its recommendation. If you challenge a public hearing item in court, you may be limited to raising only those issues you or someone else raised at the public hearing described in this notice, the public notice, or in written correspondence delivered to the city at or prior to the public meeting. Speakers should fill out a speaker form found by the door and hand it to the <coughs> recording secretary prior to addressing the commission. The speaker should come up to the microphone and speak since this meeting is being recorded, and this will help the staff in preparing the minutes. The, the item on the agenda tonight is 2757 Melody Drive, APN 050-081-010. Request for consideration of a conditional use permit amendment for a proposed modification of an existing wireless telecommunications facility to increase the number of antennas on an existing lattice tower from six to nine, three net new antennas and associated improvements. This item was continued from the July 18, 2016 Planning Commission meeting. The July 18, 2016 staff report can be viewed in e-packets. And Jill, do you have anything for us? Good evening, Commissioners. My name is Jill Lewis, and I will present to you the request for consideration of a conditional use permit amendment to increase the number of T-Mobile antennas from six to nine. This item was first heard at the July 18th, 2016 meeting. So reasons for continuance, uh, T-Mobile uh, should ensure sufficient signage is on site. Uh, to uh, ensure that fence and gates are, are properly secured and give them time to, uh, for T-Mobile to come back with a proposal for sufficient screening and landscaping. To refresh your memory, the existing lattice tower is located on the Heather School site located at 2757 Melendy. The project description was for six out of the eight originally approved antennas, which happened in 2010, um, mounted on the 81 and a half foot tall lattice tower. So the proposal was to add three new antennas, so there would be a total of nine. Uh, two of the proposed antennas are eight feet tall and one is six foot tall. Uh, they need to switch out the mast to accommodate these new antennas. Three remote radio units will also be added, and they're swapping out one rack within the existing equipment enclosure. This is a close-up view of the existing equipment shelter on site. As you recall, there were concerns made during the public comment regarding the true removal at the adjacent Cal Water site. So this is an aerial perspective of the immediately adjacent Cal Water site located on Melendy Drive just west of Heather Elementary School. Staff reached out to Cal Water to learn more about the tree removal and future plans for the site. Their representative stated that there was a proposal to uh, construct an additional tank on site uh, that would require design review by the Planning Commission. Uh, their initial landscape plans call for eight new oak trees. Uh, landscaping would also be reviewed as part of design review approval. Uh, there were nine pine trees on site, um, Monterey pines, which do not require a permit for removal. Uh, an application submittal is expected next week. Uh, staff is still working for, uh, with Cal Water to learn more about the number of trees removed and their exact location. Uh, 
As staff mentioned before, it is not Cal Water's responsibility to screen the uh, cell tower site. This information is provided for context only. Regarding the landscaping specifically, there was a condition included within the tw uh, June 21st, 2010 conditional use permit that required planting to shield the existing equipment shed and chain link fencing from Mellon D Drive. It does not appear that either the equipment shelter or fencing has been screened. Staff proposes to add a condition which states that all conditions within the June 21st, 2010 conditional use permit shall apply. And with that, I'm available for any questions you have of staff. Any questions? So, I mean, it seems like they haven't, that T-Mobile has, I mean, you've written it here, uh, that T-Mobile has not, uh, it's had six years to abide by the prior conditions and didn't do so. So can we prevent them from installing uh, the equipment until after they've complied with the condition? Um, through the chair, yes, um, to Commissioner Silverman's question, because the obligation outlined in um, the 2010 CUP is an ongoing existing obligation um, that was made a part of the condition approval at that time. So if it's now discovered that they have not met their obligation under the 2010 um, permit, we can put that as a condition to this application. Because, I mean, normally I think we would give uh, an applicant a reasonable amount of time to install uh, uh, landscaping and allow it to grow. But, I mean, they, they had six years and they didn't do it. So I guess at this point they have a choice of either planting really, 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 really bo big boxes or waiting until it grows uh, to actually install its equipment. I mean, I, and I guess that's the choice of T-Mobile, unless it wants to come up with a, a, a different strategy for, um, you know, for providing some uh, some relief to the community. So my recommend, recommendation to the commission would be to be clear as to what that condition would be tonight. Okay, I can do that. Okay. Jesse, do you have anything? No. <laughs> I think I was the one that pointed it out that they, they hadn't been, that condition wasn't on the new uh, request for uh, approval. So um, seems simple to me. Yeah, might take a while. Does the applicant want to say anything? Hello, uh, Caitlin McLester, the land use planner on this project. My client is T-Mobile. Um, so I did propose to T-Mobile the uh, design option to do a monopine. Obviously, it is very difficult to convince a large business to tear down an existing structure that is currently protected and rebuild a new one uh, for a couple hundred thousands of dollars. Um, I also was able to do a little research regarding the property and who actually owns the tower. Um, it's not T-Mobile, so they actually don't have the right to tear down the tower and replace it. Um, it would also be a bit difficult to get all the carriers involved to pitch in and get this project going. It would take a very long time as well. Um, in addition, the police department antennas are also located on this tower, so that's um, a whole other thing. I'm not sure what their regulations or rules regarding that are. Um, also, the land itself does not belong to T-Mobile as well, so that is another issue that we would have to figure out if this were going to be an option at all. Um, but instead of discussing this, they sent me a letter uh, regarding Section 6409, which it looks like you guys have on your mm -hmm. desk there. Um, so that was their response. And <laughs> it's, not re it's not really a response. It's, a, it's just, I mean, we're quite familiar with it. It's not our first application, but right. I mean, it's not really a response to what we were requesting, but okay. Right. I, I understand that. And, and I mean, there's, there's only so much I can do to try to convince them. Um, I did reach out to the Cal Water Company um, as well. 
Uh, Jill got a lot more information from them than I was able to. Um, they told me that they weren't sure what their future project was for that space. And I was trying to figure out if T-Mobile would be able to uh, plant additional trees there. Um, they said they weren't sure that they needed to check with their superior and that they'd get back to me. And I haven't yet to hear from them. Um, but yes, this is the first I've heard of this. This will be a lot easier to get them to do. Um, as they will probably be forced to, so that would be easier. Um, but yeah, that's all. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. All right, thank you. Does anyone from the public wish to speak? You, yeah, you can do that later. You can do that later. Yeah. Come on. Good evening. Thank you for again for your time and for holding the special meeting. Um, the screening and equipment shed is lower. It doesn't uh, address the tower itself, and I'm sure you're aware of that. So um, the, some of the suggestions for the watershed area, oak trees are slow growing. Um, if there were pine trees, I know they grow a little faster, but it's, still the, it's not the watershed's responsibility to screen the cell tower. And I know that the board only has so much within their control. But I do appreciate your time and, and everything that you're doing to work towards um, mediating this. So thank you very much. Thank you. And seeing no one else, um, do I have a motion to close public hearing? So moved. Do have a second? Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Gutierrez? Yes. Vice Chair Silverman? Yes. Chair Bergman? Yes. All right, discussion. I mean, I think we kind of learned a lesson um, in that, you know, I think that probably the folks who were reviewing this application back in 2010 uh, were relying on the existing screening to screen. Uh, and I mean, at the time, I imagine we could have required a monopine, uh, but we didn't. Um, and that's unfortunate, and it's unfortunate we can't do it now. Um, but I also wish that T-Mobile was a better neighbor. But with that said, I mean, I, I can make a motion to make T-Mobile do the most we possibly can, and I'm prepared to make that motion. I, I would agree. agree. I, I mean, it, the 2010 conditional use permit condition still applies, so I think we need to make sure that's written in the new uh, approval as detailed as we can, or as detailed as uh, the attor city attorney would um, would advise us to, um, but I'm a little disappointed um, by receiving a letter that pretty much states what we already know. <laughs> um, but thank you. Um, so I support any kind of addition to uh, the conditional use permit application that you propose, Dave. What are we thinking as far as conditions? Well, it's basically, I mean, it's going to be in addition to complying um, that they uh, that they not build um, uh, anything until after they have complied with um, all prior uh, use permit requirements and provided um, the actual screening that they agreed to provide six years ago. I mean, that's basically, seems like that is the maximum that we can require. Should be specific on the types of... Well, the condition, the condition didn't really, that condition didn't really specify, so I don't know if, what would... We can do the maximum amount of uh, screening as approved by staff, right? Yes, you can. Okay. And I would um, ensure that that language makes it into the condition tonight. Yep. Okay. Um, right. Anything else? Well, there's not much more we can do. So. so I move that the Planning Commission uh, begrudgingly approve T-Mobile's request for a conditional use permit amendment for installation of three new antennas with associated improvements at an existing facility at 2757 Melody Drive, 
based on the required findings and for the reasons incorporated in the staff report and conditioned in the conditional use permit with the addition of uh, condition 20 as discussed and the requirement that uh, that the prior condition of fully screening uh, the uh, the site be completed prior to uh, any changes to the tower. Second that. Roll call, please. Oh, and I'm, I'm sorry. Um, the motion should have reflected that um, the screening uh, has to be approved by staff to the maximum extent feasible. I'll second that amendment. <laughs> no problems. Commissioner Gutierrez? Yes. Vice Chair Silverman? Yes. Chair Bergman? Yes. All right. Thank you. That's it. Meeting adjourned.